Hello, everybody. A uh, warm welcome to you clicking in to this, our July 2nd, 2020 edition of I'll Ask and Answer. This is our continuing question and answer Q&A series uh, featuring uh, regional experts in business development, among other folks that we have on our series. Uh, I'm Chris Morello, the Director of Economic Development for Isle of Wight County, and I'm uh, joined by our co-host, Jessica Healy, who is the President of the Isle of Wight Chamber of Commerce. Hello, Jessica. How are you? Hey there, Chris. Doing we well. Are, Happy uh, early Independence Day. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, let's see if I can get this back on the screen. Well, how about if you, uh, Jessica, um, wouldn't mind introducing our guest today, who has been with us before. He's our serial guest, I think we can call him now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we have our, a returning star of our show, <laughs> Jim Carroll with the um, Hampton Road Small Business Development Center, and I recently appointed co-chair for the small uh, biz and retail section of our uh, regional recovery task force. So welcome, Jim. How are you today? Jessica, thank you very much and welcome. It's good to be back with the two of you. I'm glad we've got the band back together again. <laughs> yeah, it's right. like the original gang. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> We're going to dive on into some questions and um, so our first question has kind of been a hot topic lately and um, it is the um, about the PPP for forgiveness program loan program. So Jim, what is the latest status of the forgiveness, forgiveness phase for the PPP loan? Uh, we are now into the forgiveness phase of the PPP loan. However, we have not received all of the guidance that's necessary for the banks to make a determination as to uh, what can be forgiven and what can't be forgiven. We're still waiting for uh, the Treasury Department and SBA to issue the necessary uh, information so that we can move forward. Uh, we at the SBDC have been putting out as much information as possible to make sure that everybody is fully up on step with what is taking place so that they don't get blindsided. Uh, we've posted those things on the website some of the SPD or one of the SPDC offices in our network uh, developed two Excel spreadsheets to make the completion of the forms, both the easy form as well as the long form, easier to do. And so we have those posted on our website. And it, I highly recommend they take a look at that just to get comfortable with it. As of today, Congress passed a built to extend the PPP program out until August. So originally the door closed or the window closed on the 30th of June, but that now is open and or will be open once the president signs it. But there are still changes that could be coming downstream with uh, the forgiveness program. So we are telling people right now to uh, basically hold off on the filing for the forgiveness because the banks really don't know at this point. So, are, Jim, are we seeing any changes in how forgiveness is computed? You know, if the business owner has actually received an, an idle loan? Uh, well, the forgiveness is for the PPP loan, right. uh, but the idle does come into play. Originally, under the PPP program, uh, you had eight weeks to spend the money. Uh, on paychecks, rent, everything that was certified, and you had to spend 75% of that money on authorized expenditures for payroll protection. PPP Flex came along, and that extended the period from eight weeks to 24 weeks, and it reduced the amount of money that had to be spent on authorized expenditures from 75% down to 60%. So if you had an early loan, you were under PPP. If you had a later loan, you were under PPP flex. I believe they've now said that everybody is covered under PPP flex. One of the issues that you have is if you received a PPP loan and you also received an economic injury disaster loan advance up from $1,000 to $10,000 based on the size of your business, that money would be computed into the forgiveness factor and it would lower the amount of forgiveness that you had based on the money that you received from the EIDL advance. You're getting two dips, if you will, at the government well. And so you are going to have to pay taxes on the EIDL advance. We don't know what's going to happen with that. We have heard um, 
reports that one of the proposals forward says they will waive that, but right until or up until now, it is still a requirement that you're going to have to pay taxes on that EIDL advance if you received a PPP loan. Very interesting, uh, Jim. And um, I guess we'll we'll kind of wait and see what happens as there might be legislation going um, or coming soon um, you know, to affect all of that. So kind of switching gears a little bit, we entered phase three yesterday. Um, <clears throat> and um, I just kind of wanted to know, you know, even though we are still seeing some um, positive uh, cases for COVID-19, in the Commonwealth, have you seen anything on in your side um, that has impacted this reopening to phase three? Uh, right now, we've just started on phase three and it's kind of a phase three modified. Originally under phase three, restaurants and bars would be open. But as we've seen in other states where they've done the reopening, uh, people reverted back to their old ha habits and social distancing became, went from six feet down to six inches, especially in bars. And so the governor decided that we would put a restriction on people inside bars. Now the, you know, the drawback to that is, is that if you were an owner of a restaurant that had a bar, you had to go out and get your staff rehired. You had to get them retrained. You had to buy additional inventory and you had to have everything lined up so that on one July, when phase three came into effect, you were ready to go into business. Well, uh, you know, at the last possible minute, the governor stopped that. And so now we have restaurants and who have bars that hired people, hired, bought inventory, got everything ready to go and now they have no customers. So it's it's going to put a, a significant hit on their cash flow, but it's totally understandable. Uh, you know, social distancing still has to be maintained because we still are in a healthcare crisis. Yeah, so, so Jim, you know, um, pre-COVID-19, current COVID-19, moving forward, uh, there are probably a lot of things that, that you would say as an advocate for businesses are, are good tools to ha always have with you, no matter you know, whether you're a health crisis or not. And I guess, though, for now, I, I would want to know what is kind of at the top of your mind when it comes to the best tool available to, to businesses to manage through this, this piece of their business's history? The biggest and greatest tool that's available to a small business owner is his or her management team. We are talking about the business's accountant, their attorney, their banker, their insurance agent, and their business advisor. Uh, these are all individuals with whom you have to have very close relationships and people with whom you on whom you can rely when you have questions. Uh, the bad news is, is that for the first four, you got to pay for them. Uh, the good news is your business advisor, that could be the Small Business Development Center. It could be SCORE. It could be anybody. And, you know, the SBDC and SCORE are free of charge. These individuals know the intricacies of their fields so much better than you do. So it just makes common sense to rely upon their knowledge to help your business uh, stay afloat and develop the strategies so that you can move your business forward. There are other tools that are out there if you want to be, you know, kind of the DIY, do it yourself, small business owner. Uh, the SBDC has a tool called Growth Wheel, which is a very involved uh, 360 degree look at both internal and external issues uh, or areas for your business. Uh, we look at your business plan, we look at marketing, we look at uh, financial analysis, we look at infrastructure. And it is very detailed, but once you go through it, and it takes a, a week or two to go through it and answer all the questions, you will have a business strategy to move your business forward. In the area of cash flow, uh, a new cash flow system has just, our cash flow tool has come on the marketplace by Finagraph, F-I-N-A-G-R-A-P-H. 
and it is being offered to the SBDCs for free of charge. The only thing we have to do is we have to sit several classes, about six hours of class, to learn how to properly use this tool. And the great thing about it is, is that if you are using QuickBooks, you can plug your numbers directly into this program and then using the artificial intelligence features associated with the program, it can predict what your future cash flows will look like based on the information we plug into it. It's an absolutely amazing tool. It's gonna to take us a while to get up on step, but once we're up on step, we'll be able to increase our abilities to um, move forward. So Jim, you mentioned the SBDC website you have mentioned before, and I'm putting up on the screen, I hope you can see it okay. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the actual COVID-19 resources page, so a sub-page, if you will, of the, of the home page. But these resources uh, that you were talking about, I guess I'll, I'll, they, they can be found by folks. Um, or maybe if you can tell me where I, I need to go, I can, uh, you know, for folks to see. I'm in training, counseling, there are programs here. Actually, uh, if, you could, if you could scroll down on that page. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, right there. Uh, we have uh, information on the CARES Act. We have information, you know, a bunch of frequently asked questions. But if you scroll down, uh, we have, there you go. We have guidance for specific businesses. Mm -hmm. We have gone through and looked at these areas mm -hmm. and have developed, found the best practices and the tools necessary to reopen and remanage your business. And it is an absolutely amazing uh, set of guidelines that we have put together. We had seven people across the state network. I was one of them doing the research to make sure that we could put the best possible information out so that small business owners had the necessary tools to move forward. Uh, we have a variety of web webinars, including a whole library of them. Uh, we've even gone so far as now we have Spanish language webinars, Spanish language tools uh, mm -hmm. that businesses can access as they go forward. Mm -hmm. um, if you could scroll up a little bit, um, let's see. Maybe we have a checklist of, it's a review, restore, reopen. And there, there are guidelines there that, you know, in a very general nature, that a small business owner can download and they can, uh, let's see, if you click on the Virginia SBDC Guide Business okay. Recovery Resource Center, no, third window over under Frequently uh -huh. Asked Questions. Oh, here, Business yes. Recovery Resource Center? Yes. Okay. And by the way, for I've now got it up here. You can see Virginia is all spelled out, sbdc.org. Okay. Right. If, if you scroll down, here we go. Under recover, well, uh -huh. you see review, reopen, mm -hmm. recover. That mm -hmm. is our framework. And so what we do with small business owners is we take them right onto review and we look at the personal assessments, we look at initial business assessments, cash flow, financial, step by step by step, so that we have a logical sequence to follow. First, looking at it from a personal standpoint, and then looking at reopening, and then figuring out how to move forward during your recovery. Excellent stuff, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, Jim, that that's an amazing tool for our small businesses and. Um, and just to kind of round out our chat and, and piggyback off of everything that you just mentioned, what would you say um, is the one thing that a small business can do right now to make themselves more resilient and thrive as we go into phase three? You know, we've had um, businesses slowly reopening over the past few weeks and um, getting to full capacity and able to offer almost their full menu of services, um, especially our forward-facing businesses. But what is that one thing that you would recommend they could do? Actually, I'm going to give you two things. Sorry about that. Um, uh, the first, very seriously, is you've got to know your numbers. You have the time now to sit down with your accountant and have your accountant explain to you the details and the information that can be found on a balance sheet 
that can be found in a profit and loss statement and can be found in a cash flow statement. You can determine the health of, or we, the SBDC counselors who are trained to understand this stuff, we can tell the health of your business just by looking at those sheets and in, and in 10 to 20 minutes, I can tell you what if your business is going to succeed or fail just by looking at the numbers on the piece of paper. The old adage goes, if you don't know your numbers, pretty soon you will have no cash. And uh, you really have to understand that you can operate your business out of a checkbook. So take the time now to do that. Uh, the second thing is, and this is the hard one, is you have to start to build a cash reserve, uh, either in, in hard cash that's in the bank, or if you have any short-term lines of credit that you can tap as you move forward, but understand the uh, issue that you're using credit and short-term credit costs more than long-term credit. So you have to be careful on how you spend that money. You can't go out and buy, you know, buy a new car using, well, you could go out and buy a new car using short-term credit, but you're going to be 17 or 18% interest on it. So if you're, if you have a job coming up and you have to buy supplies for that job, or you have to cover your paychecks for a period of time in order to get that job moving forward, that's a perfect use of short-term cash. Buying long-term purchases is the wrong thing to do. So you have to understand exactly the ramifications when you use that. But having that cash reserve pool is absolutely essential. Well, well, Jim, I think that, that rounds out our, our formalized questions here that we had for you today. I want to say that you've managed to make, uh, I think a lot of small businesses really stop and understand some things that they may not have before, not just through our forum, but we're seeing you on our local news channels uh, being featured as part as, of news feature stories. And, and they're coming to you and they're asking you some of the same questions and you're able to, to help folks that way as well. I'm not sure you're getting any sleep. So I'm hopeful <laughs> that you can get some soon. <laughs> and we're just so grateful uh, to have you today on, on this. And, and we'll post this today, July 2nd, for folks and make sure that we point toward the fact that you're offering a lot of great advice to our, our small business community. Oh, well, thank you very much. And I, and I have to turn around and extend you know, my appreciation uh, to the two of you and this fantastic program that you've put together because you have given me the tools to reach out far beyond my ability to do so sitting here in my little bunker in my house. Uh, this is fantastic and the support that, that uh, both Isle of Wight uh, Economic Development and especially the Isle of Wight Chamber have given me is absolutely outstanding and I cannot thank you enough for that. All right, Jessica, any final words for, before we wrap? Have an awesome weekend, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being with us today. You um, never disappoint and, you know, fill us with information to take back to our partners and, and our businesses and community. So thank you so much. Right. Yes, ma'am. Happy Independence Day coming up, everyone. Take Absolutely. Care. Take care. All right. All right. Goodbye. Bye now.